tragedy at the Changzhou Bun Snatching Festival as a worker plunged from the Bun Tower. The WA state government will introduce new GPS devices to track dangerous sex offenders. Thank you for watching. Also in the broadcast, hundreds of Malaysians protest in Perth, demanding a fair election in their own country. And the Harry Potter Quidditch match has arrived in WA universities. This is the Evening News. Good evening. We begin the newscast with the tragedy happened during the Bun Scrambling Festival in Hong Kong's Changzhou Island. A 33-year-old worker plunged 9 metres from the Bun Tower after his safety belt's ring failed. He remained in an intensive care unit at the Eastern Hospital. Hong Kong correspondent John Wai has more. Horrified crowds watched as the 33-year-old Changchao resident named Mila plunged about 9 metres while collecting buns for festival devotees. Mila rushed to the Changchao Hospital by ambulance and transferred to the Eastern Hospital. An eyewitness named Zhang said Miller had shouted for help when he was near the top of the tower. Other workers started climbing the tower, he said, but Miller fell before they could get to him. Chen Chaoban Festival Committee Chairman Yong Chi Ming said since there was a downpour on Saturday night, it was possible some of the bamboo that made up the tower was damaged as well as slippery. Police have launched an investigation, and Yong said the organizers will be reviewing safety procedures. John YDHK News, Hong Kong. Meanwhile, the thrilling bun scrambling competition has ended with local contestants claiming victory. Nine male and three female contestants were scrambling to get the most buns from a 14 metre high bun tower in three minutes. Kwok Chan Yin was the winner in the male group who told the media he's surprised that he won. While Lisa Chung, who succeeded in the female group, said she was glad that she performed well in the competition. Back to Perth now, hundreds of Malaysians have demonstrated outside of Perth's Malaysian Embassy on Saturday afternoon, demanding a free and fair election in their home country. The demonstration is part of a rally being held in other cities worldwide, including Malaysia's capital Kuala Lumpur. The outcry for democracy for Malaysia has been loud and clear last Saturday, after hundreds of Malaysians gathered at Langley Park and marched to the Malaysian Embassy in the Perth CBD, demanding an electoral reform in their country. Before the march, the protesters sang songs to show their unity and determination to strive for a free Malaysia. The demonstrations were generally peaceful, with both the young and the old joined together a common aim. A particular told DHK News that this campaign has been ongoing for years. The protest is organized on the social networking site Facebook. This is the biggest birthday in the world today. There's 80 cities in 40 countries, and as you can see, the response in Perth is phenomenal. The demand for electoral reform, electoral reform in Malaysia is just from the Rakyat themselves. It is not a political movement. Meanwhile, back in Malaysia's capital, Kuala Lumpur, things are not that peaceful, with the police sprayed chemical, laced water and fire tear gas at protesters. It's understood that Malaysia's opposition leader, Anwar Ibrahim, has also attended the rally. Patrick Lazarus, DHK News. WA Corrective Services Minister Terry Redman announced that the state government will allocate $6 million in the state budget to introduce a new GPS device to track dangerous sex offenders, giving a much needed security boost to WA communities. If the scheme is successful, the device could be expanded to monitor other high-risk offenders, including arsonists. After the Eastern State have rolled out the similar GPS technology to track down dangerous offenders, the Western Australian Government has announced a $6 million package from the state budget 2012-2013 to the use of satellite technology to track sex offenders. GPS technology will allow authorities to determine the offender's location via satellite and an alarm will activate if the offender enters the forbidden zone. A similar technology used by the Department of Corrective Services involves radio frequency equipment, which can monitor offenders' curfew requirements and home detention bail. But unlike GPS satellite technology, it does not track their movements. Although Corrective Service Minister Terry Redman said this technology is not a silver bullet, it can offer better protection for WA communities. We have a very strong record of being strong on community safety. This will enhance the choices for the Supreme Court when making decisions around uh, the conditions that are imposed on dangerous sex offenders. The opposition says they will support the initiative but stress 
that response time from the police is critical because sexual assault can be committed in a matter of minutes. The wearing of an ankle bracelet would indicate to the Department of Corrective Services where those people are, but it's all about the response time. How quickly can they be picked up to ensure an attack doesn't take place? GPS tracking could be first implemented to the 18 offenders whose name appears in the Dangerous Sexual Offenders Act 2006. Once the initiative is proved to be effective, it could be possible for this technology to be used on other dangerous offenders. Alexandra Mollo, DHK News. Australians around the nation paused to remember all the soldiers who gave their lives fighting in the war in the past. Prime Minister Julie Gillard has attended a dawn service at Gallipoli in Turkey where Australian and New Zealand soldiers landed 97 years ago during World War I. At the same time, hundreds and thousands of West Australians attended dawn service at Kings Park and Fremantle. The state opposition leader Mark McGowan was pleased with the service and said it was very moving. I think the events today have been very well done. Uh, I went to four of them. I thought the RSL did an outstanding job at each of the events I attended and I think uh, most West Australians will think that it was a very good set of events. There is more bad news for WA families with Alinta Energy announcing it will increase gas prices by 8.3%. The company has blamed the price rises on the cost of gas and says it is forcing them to lift their prices. The increase means families will have to pay 90 cents extra per week on their average utility bills. Energy Minister Peter Collier said the state government has been even-handed on the matter, while the opposition's energy spokesperson Ben Wyatt said the increase is unreasonable. And finally tonight, Quidditch arrived in WA universities popularised by the Harry Potter films. A group of uni students have decided to form a Quidditch team and play against each other on the bush court every Tuesday evenings. Students will have to put a broom between their legs and try to score points by throwing a specific ball through the goal. The event was first organised on social networking site Facebook and attracted popularity among students at Murdoch University. We did our first advertising like last week, we put some posters up. So before that it was only people who randomly found out on Facebook. So. That was good. Um, I mean, I'm partly helping to organise it and numbers are going up every week and it's looking really promising. Although the match is not as rough as it shows on the Harry Potter movie, I've decided to be brave and give it a shot. So Ivan, did your team win? Oh yes, we did. <laughs> that is how the world looks tonight. Good evening everyone. Good night.